Welcome to the present value lesson. So today we are going to continue to um, find the, uh, you know, use the compound interest formula. But um, what we did last day was, you know, we used this formula here and we always calculated A. A was that future amount. So if we were leaving our money in the bank and we left it there, we gained interest and we, you know, came back five years later and uh, got the money out, we were finding the total amount of money that we would have. Um, if you look at it from the perspective of getting a loan, so you borrow some money from the bank, they're going to charge you. They're going to charge you interest. So when you have to return it back to the bank, there's a final amount that you have to return back. That's even more than what you borrowed. So we always calculate a day. So today, today's lesson will be on how to calculate um, the present amount, okay, um, or principal. So you know they they like to call this like if I add these here, future value, okay, and then present amount or principal or present value. These are all the the same here, okay? All right, so um, again, present value, what that is, is like literally, um, if you were gonna put some money in investment and then go get it later, um, the, one, the piece of information that's gonna be missing this time is I'm not gonna tell you how much you put into the bank. I'm just gonna say that you made this much interest and you have this much total at the end of the five years or whatever you left it, but I'm not gonna say how much you actually put in. You have to go and find that today. All right, so before we start that, if you're just, um, I'm just showing you that there's this formula here for present value, okay? But if you um, go through and um, actually look at the future value formula, you can actually get to the present value formula um, uh, by uh, just solving for it, okay? So let's do that here right now. So I'm just gonna write out the present value formula. So I will give you the present value formula anyway on a test, but if you um, are curious, how did, how did they get the present value? All it is is that, see how it's A equals P times all of this? So remember, when something's multiplied and you need to move it, so you want to take this whole thing here and you want to move it over there. So what you're going to do is divide it over. So if I take that and I move it over, I'll write it over here. So the whole thing goes, okay, because it was multiplied to P. So that is your present value formula. That's all it is. We just kind of solved and now we have an equation where it is equal to P. So A equals, or P equals A over one plus I over N, okay? So everything's still the same, the way you calculate I, the way you calculate N, uh, and then uh, this time though, I'm gonna tell you what that total future amount was. So how much money um, did you start with? That's what we have to find today. Okay, so we'll jump right into an example here. Um, so we have Sam, she invests enough money today to have 3200 for tuition uh, when he goes to college in two years. So basically that's the final amount here. Okay, so he puts some money in today and he knows, like we know that he um, ends up with this much money uh, in his account, um, okay, so in two years. So he, he puts money in so that he will have this much money in his account in two years. So if he invests his money at 6% per year compounded monthly, how much does he need to invest? Okay, so how much does he need to start with? So right away, if you wanted to write, you know, down here, oh, the thing I need to find is uh, the principal, the present amount. We don't know what that is. Okay, but we do know what he does end up with in the future, 3,200, okay? All right, so uh, so from there we know that the you know the rate is uh, six percent, okay, but we can write that as a decimal. We know the time that um, he leaves the money in the account is two years, okay. So now what we need to do is go find i and n like we did last day. So it's still the same. We're going to take the percent, and we're going to divide it by how many uh, compounding periods there are. Okay, so look for the compounded, there it is, compounded monthly. So the compounding period is 12, like that. All right, so we're going to divide our percent by 12. And we get 0.005. Okay, all right, there's our I, and now, so that's the interest per compounding period. So for every time I 
uh, throw interest onto the 3002, or sorry, we don't know what the amount is, the amount that we put in. Um, I'm going to put that much interest every time I do it, okay? All right, so how many times we're going to do this in the two years? Well, in one year, it's compounded monthly, right? So in one year, we're going to put interest on 12 times. And then, how long are we keeping the money in the bank? For two years. So all together, the interest will go on 24 times at this interest rate here. Okay, so we need to find P. So we are going to use our new formula today. So it's amount over 1 plus I over uh, to the power of N. Okay, so let's go and start solving here. Okay, so A is 3200. Okay, so 1 plus your interest rate, which is 0 0.005 to the power of 24. Okay, so again, follow bed maths. Be careful. Just go through. Let's clean up the bottom first. Okay, so we're going to add the brackets first. Okay, and then the next step here is we want to take care of that exponent. So uh, I went ahead and uh, calculated the 1.005 to the uh, 24th. Okay, so that's the exponent. And we got this number here. So again, I know last day we, I just said, oh, carry the number and then do something with the number. Here it's a little tricky. So um, yeah, you might want to write this down. And then um, once you get that number, now go into your calculator and go 3,200 uh, 3, divided by that number, okay? All right, and then I'll get um, this number here. Just write all the digits here. And then again, because it's money, I want you to pay attention uh, to your rounding, okay? All right, so again, um, I want to keep two decimal places. I'm going to look here, and uh, that's four, so that's not bigger than five, or five or bigger. So I'm going to go back, and this is our... Uh, amount that we would have to put in. Okay, so this is the principal, the present value. So if I write this, so the present value, or what did they call it? They said, how much money would you need to invest? Okay, so we can write that instead. So uh, the um, money uh, to invest is $2,800. $30.99. Okay. All right. So uh, again, um, we are trying to save up three to 3200 uh, for to pay for tuition. Um, so if we put in $2,838.99 uh, today, uh, and then we leave it in there for two years, and the percent, uh, the interest rate is 6% per year compounded monthly, then uh, yeah, you'll end up with um, that much money in two years. Okay. All right. So um, yeah. So that, so again, today it's about finding what you start with and be, and then given like what you end up with. Okay. All right. We'll do one more here. Um, so that was uh, leaving money in the bank. So that was an investment. So this one is a loan. Okay. All right. So John has a loan for $5,000 that's due in four years. He wants to pay off his debt early. Um, the creditor, so whoever he's borrowing money from, will um, is willing to discount the loan um, at an interest rate of 8% compounded semi-annually. Okay, so so basically um, he owes uh, he owes this creditor. So think of it as the bank. Um, he owes them five thousand. Okay, so you have to pay that. He has to pay all of that back. Okay. Um, it's due in four years, okay, so that's uh, the time, okay, so let's write time is four years, okay, he wants to pay off his debt early, so the interest rate is 8%, okay, and it's the compounding period is semi-annually, so that means two, okay, so we're going to go through and calculate our I and N, so 8% as a decimal, divide by 100, get to here, and then you're going to divide by 2, okay? So you end up with 0 0.04. So, uh, so again, in one year, you're going to uh, place the interest on twice. 
So uh, each time you do it, it'll be 4%, and then the next one will be 4%. Okay, and then n is how many times do we do this in the four-year period that you lose, uh, that you um, have this loan? Okay, so um, so you're gonna in one year, it's semi-annually, so that's twice. But then you do this for how many years? Four years. So there will be eight compounding periods. How many times the interest will go on? Okay, so again, you borrowed this money. Um, so we're trying to figure out how much did you borrow. Uh, for the bank to put interest on eight times at 4%, okay? And then so therefore you'd have to pay 5000 back. So that is our goal. We need to figure out the principal, the present value, what we started with um, to end up with um, having to pay back 5000 to the bank or the creditor here. Okay, so again, we need to find a present value, so we're going to use the present value formula. So I'd say the hardest part really with these questions is just making sure you understand, um, you know, uh, when you have compounded periods, how many, you know, if it's yearly, monthly, uh, weekly, you know, what, what is the number of compounded periods? And then from there, uh, figuring out I and N, okay? So um, I think like you've probably figured out after a while, you always divide the compounded period and you always multiply the compounded period. So, so you just get those correct. And then from there, you're just subbing stuff in, which you're great at. So we just go from there, okay? So 5,000 divided by 1 plus 0.04 and to the exponent 8, okay? So that's your present value that we're finding. So let's go through. Good math says complete the brackets first. Like that, okay? And then... Um, uh, yeah, just go to the exponent, uh, 1.04 to the 8, clean that up, write it in. I'm just going to write all the digits for you, make sure you're getting the same number. End up with $3,653, and we got to figure out how many cents here. Okay, so again, we want to keep the 5, because we want two decimal places. We're going to look at this number. It's not 5 or greater, so we're going to dump those off. And the final amount here is that much, okay? Okay, so the creditor will accept this much today uh, in order to pay off the loan, okay? So, Okay, all right, so there uh, is present value for today. Um, so just, uh, again, just go over those, uh, practice the worksheet I give you, and then try the checkpoint.